Welcome to Prescribing Lifestyle, the podcast that's all about empowering you to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm your host, Dr. Avi Charlton, and each week we'll dive into the latest research, practical tips, and inspiring stories to help you optimize your well being. From nutrition and fitness to mental health and mindfulness, we'll explore every aspect of lifestyle medicine. Giving you the tools you need to make informed decisions and take control of your life. Today, I have for you the recording of my talk from the Low Carb Dinner on the 18th of May, 2024. I talk about the top 10 tips for thriving on your low carb journey. I will give you a few tips on managing your mindset, trying to help you think that you're not missing out and how to maintain on sustaining this fabulous lifestyle and trying to change your mindset. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Prescribing Lifestyle. Today I've got a treat for you. I've got Dr. Nellam Dharma Priya, I've invited her along to talk about intermittent fasting. Dr. Nellam is a GP in Brisbane. She originally did her medical school in UK and uh, came over to Australia and lived in Brisbane. I've met her a few years ago and uh, she has a very similar journey to me. She is a low carb GP. She's found this journey to be uh amazing to her own health and to her own patients and I will let her introduce herself and tell you about her journey. Hello, welcome to the podcast, Dr. Nellam. Hi, Avi. Thank you for having me on and um, yes, so um, you know, I, um, I'm i trained in the UK and regular GP training, like regular doctor training, I would say. And um, and then I came over to Australia in 2009 and established a practice in Brisbane and was happily going along doing what I thought. Um, well, I thought I was doing a good job being a, a GP, you know, treating my patients until I myself started to go through menopause in my uh, late 40s, early 50s, and um, and really struggled during that time frame, um, like many women gaining weight, particularly around the belly. Um, and, you know, other things like uh, snoring and heartburn, particularly brain fog was a big issue for me. I mean, I remember uh, every time I left my my work computer, my screen, I felt I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember drug names. I couldn't remember medical conditions. I I really, it it was scary. I thought I was losing my ability to be a doctor. Um, But the, 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 the wake up call came when I did my blood tests at the time. And that showed me that I was pre-diabetic and really pointing towards the future of heart disease. And um, my mother was diagnosed with um, type 2 diabetes at 52 and all her family uh, either have diabetes or died of diabetes related complications. So I knew, I knew in my, in my gut that this was what I was, where I was heading to. And this was despite doing everything I considered, you know, I was doing everything right. Everything Mm. that I told my patients to do, you know, um, eat low fat, uh, (laughs) exercise like a maniac, you know, (laughs) I was doing all of that. I was, you know, boxing, running, uh, all these things. And despite this, this, so I realized that I had to do something different. And then the reading and um, really looking into um, what other options were there? And that's when I found insulin and insulin resistance and then relating to that low carb. Now, this was quite difficult for me because mm-hmm. you know, I am, uh, I come from Sri Lanka. That's mm-hmm. where I was born. That's where I was raised. So Sri Lankan food is absolutely amazing, but it's just chock of Chock, uh, chock yes. full of carbs. Lots uh, so, of rice and bread, yes, it's same yes, as the exactly. Chinese food. Yes. yes, absolutely. So this, it took me three months to get my head around. Well, you know, mm-hmm. can I actually do this? And then once I decided I had to give it a go, 
it didn't take long for the changes to start happening. And, um, you know, uh, within three months, I had lost particularly that belly fat. Wow. I was ignoring anymore. Um uh, you know, I I I wasn't really on many medications, but I was I was not on any medication by the end of that three months. But but the the biggest change was my metabolic markers. When I okay. checked my blood test three months later, my all my metabolic markers were absolutely normal, and I had reversed that pre diabetes. And you know, it was just amazing because I felt that I had significantly altered. Um, my future prospects, you know, I was, so that's, that's what really inspired me. I felt amazing. You know, I was in my, by then I was in my early fifties. Um, I felt better than I had felt even as a younger woman. And, um, and that's what prompted me to start um, offering, um, we're, we're really learning about low carb and learning about metabolic health. And then actually uh, offering it to my patients because if it helped me surely it would help my patients there most of them are mm-hmm. in that 40 to 65 age group and yeah. coming through this peri post menopause yeah so that's yeah. that's that was my journey that's amazing and i see that you are you have whole food revolution that is your group that is set up in brisbane and you have lots of education and uh, seminars promoted for your followers. How is that going? Yes. So I, um, so I mean, this came about because I started doing this, um, you know, trying to um, share what I had learned with my patients. But as you know, it's not easy in. in um, in a clinic setting because time is limited and really it, it's very difficult to have 45 to 60 minute appointments. I mean, you can do them, but they're limited. I work three days a week. And so it's really difficult to kind of fit that in. So I decided that I had to have a way of offering this information to my patients in a different way. And so I started Whole Food Revolution, um, which is an, an online a, a platform that, 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 kind of educates, um, particularly we, our niche is peri postmenopausal women, so women over 40. And I now work with two other women. I work with Deb, who's a nurse, and Ronit, who's a life coach. So we, I feel that we offer a very uh, um, holistic approach. So I teach the science. Deb mm-hmm. is practical implementation of that. And Ronit um, is the is the life is the mindset so so that's what we do and we do a lot as you said a lot of material that we put out there around um, not just uh, weight loss but health and um, health and well-being and this you know all of that that holistic approach is is what we do at Whole Food Revolution. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is amazing so the Main reason I want to invite you to come along to do the podcast is I see that in your group, in the Whole Food Revolution group, you're doing an intermittent fasting challenge. And I want to pick your brain about intermittent fasting. So I was going to start off with introducing intermittent fasting. How does it work and how do you start and what what, what do you do? Yes, yeah, so I... um. um We really enjoy the fasting. And this is our second time we're doing this uh, guided fasting challenge. So fasting is an incredibly beneficial tool for for most people. I mean, there are certain groups that really we say need to be fasting under guidance. So, you know, pregnant women, uh, breastfeeding women, women, uh, or um, anybody who's had a history of uh, eating disorder just needs some guidance. But other and and frail elderly people shouldn't be fasting either. But really, mm. otherwise, um, fasting is incredibly beneficial mm. to most of the other the rest of the population. Uh, and oh, sorry, no children. Obviously, children shouldn't be fasting. <laughs> um, but perimenopausal women, it's it's amazing because um, the idea between in fasting is that when you're on a when you eat low carb, for instance. Mm do the what we want to do is reduce our insulin levels Mm -hmm. because insulin is what tells the body to um, store fat and you know it's it's the most important metabolic hormone so keeping insulin levels down um, 
is very beneficial to to not only weight loss but for metabol other chronic diseases as well. But all the food that we eat causes insulin to to rise even a little bit. So carbohydrate raises it the most, protein somewhat, and fat a very little. So mm. really, if you want to maximize your metabolic health journey, if we had a period where our insulin levels were really very low or non-existent, really just very low, then you all of those, uh, you know, in terms of weight loss and chronic disease management t- tends to will will improve because really that insulin level is a low for a period of time so that is the that is the the underlying premise with fasting that you you add it's an additional tool that's how i use it an additional tool to um for weight loss and for managing chronic disease um but you can't just jump into fasting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is important i think mm-hmm. that has to be a little bit of a build up to it and that's what in our in at whole food revolution that is how we we guide people we have a, a two week pre reset um mm-hmm. and and that we just teach so simple things like whole foods you know prioritize protein uh, low carb healthy fats managing stress um making sure you're sleeping um you know all of these things that have to be in place it's it's you know managing stress and sleeping are a little bit mm. more, but really thinking about these things because somebody who is very very stressed um would find it very difficult to fast mm, yeah because um as you know Avi, the high cortisol levels that are generated from chronic stress um mm-hmm. means that the insulin levels actually can't go down mm. because that maintains high insulin and as yeah. long as you have high insulin levels the body can't dip into the fat stores that that we have because mm. that's what we're trying to do with fasting what we're trying to do is to switch uh, the fuels that we use from um glucose uh, or glycogen these are the mm. this is from the the carbs and the sugars that we eat in our diet to yeah. actually switch to fat utilization and the fat comes from our fat stores but if your insulin levels are high you simply can't access these fat stores so that's why the first the first two weeks that we guide people through gives them an opportunity to get their insulin levels down so that when they do start fasting it is a easier process um and they can actually access their fat stores and fuel from fat for as long as they're fasting. Right. So first two weeks for someone who's not low carb yet you guide them through maybe time restricted eating morning yes. breakfast lunch and dinner and look after other lifestyle things sleep and stress and yeah we start and, off with uh, saying yeah. you know just three meals a day Mm-hmm. Um, and that is if you prioritize protein and make sure you're having adequate protein that's easy to do because you mm-hmm. are full and then so we start off with that well we start off with whole food because i think it's really important to try and get the processed foods out so really real food food that you can see growing in nature animal foods or plant foods mm-hmm. and then the next step is we say you know prioritize protein and we talk about how much protein people should be having and how that should be distributed in the day that makes it easier to just have three meals a day because you're full and then yeah. from there we go on transition to low carb because if you are prioritizing protein mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. protein is predominantly in animal f- foods so then you have less um need for the carb the carbohydrates the starchy foods mm-hmm. um, and so that's that that's how we transition so then by the end of that first week we say can you then um start to you we, we say that everybody needs to be having at least 12 hours uh, between dinner and breakfast mm-hmm. um, of not eating and not drinking anything apart from water um but then gradually push out that time between the dinner and breakfast um to you know 13 14 15 you know just at slowly slowly and that might take a little bit of time but mm-hmm. to do it gradually and see how how they progress so by the end of the two weeks 
what we are trying to get um, people who are on this program to do is to get to that 18 hours of fasting, just one day, just one day a week, um, Mm -hmm. where they're between dinner and breakfast, they have 18 hours. Okay. Uh, so it's a gradual process. Yeah. So 18 hours would be like a lunch at two and a dinner yeah, so at six they or had, something like that? Yeah. Ideally, I, I think it's easier to do that d- between dinner and breakfast because there's already a natural uh, break when we're sleeping. So yeah, it could be yeah. something like dinner at six. Um, and lunch around um, around lunch around twelve. Okay. Or, yep, yep. Yeah. So um, and for a lot of people, and then we do talk about um, what you can have during mm-hmm. fasting. So there are some drink, you know, certain beverages that you can have. So obviously, water with salt. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have black tea or coffee, mm-hmm. um, but avoid the teas that are sweet. So you know, not the um the the jasmine teas and the chamomiles they could potentially set you off uh set get you out of the fast mm. um you can also have uh tea or coffee um with a little bit of cream mm-hmm. uh, okay now, yeah. yeah pure cream um yeah. i do, yeah I, I recommend so that um and um and so that for a lot of people, that doesn't take you out of the fast. And the other thing that you could consider is homemade bone broth. Because, okay. um, yeah, that's another thing. Now, saying that, Avi, I do suggest that um, for most people, these beverages can be used during fasting without mm-hmm. it out of the yep. fast. Yep. It is, I we suggest that, if you are having these kind of um, drinks, then that they should check their blood sugars before and after mm. um, because it is an individual thing. It, it's to do with our individual gut microbiome. So mm. uh, some people, you know, 90% of people can have bone broth and cream with their coffee and tea with no issues. But there mm. might be that person who, because of the way their gut microbiome mm. is it might they might not be able to use those mm-hmm. um those drinks so we just suggest it's just simple get you know you can buy the the glucometers they're not very expensive um and um and just check their blood sugar levels before half an hour after and maybe an hour after it won't have it doesn't have to be done all the time it'll just be done once or twice Mm -hmm. and it gives them a really good idea about what they're looking for so you're really looking for the blood sugar levels to be the same or actually even dipping down and if that's the case then you know that um that there's no issue with this particular um beverage okay yeah great um, yeah, bone broth is sort of a controversial one. Someone says that it, it does have protein and it stops autophagy. What do you think about yeah. that? So, I mean, I suppose what we do is we, um, well, I mean, we, yes, it does. Well, what you're doing is you're actually, you're not, when you, you you're draining out all of the protein, right? So really what ha- mm-hmm. what you're left with is mainly the fat from the marrow. I mean, there mm. might be a little bit of protein, but I think um, if you, this is Jason Fung recommends a bone broth, and he is yeah. he is the master of yes. that. Yes, <laughs> he has his own recipes on there. Um, we have so at Whole Food Revolution, uh, both, all three of us, Deb, Ronit, and I, we um, we have tested um, the blood sugar before and after bone broth. Okay. We, we made our own homemade bone broth and tried that, and w- the three of us didn't have an issue. Um, but yeah, so it's just some way of getting people, ideally, you want to be able to do a water only fast or a water okay. and salt only fast. But I think it's a process. And I think if we have a few of these options available for people, it might uh, help them to get through. And then once they've got through those, so so what we do is we kind of um, guide guide people on slightly longer fasts as mm-hmm. well so in yeah. our program the longest fast that we eventually get to is 48 hours oh, but wow. I, think, I think it's a <laughs> it's a big one if you <laughs> just said right at the beginning that's what we're doing so yes it's, i think it's giving confidence mm-hmm. um, so that people realize that they actually can do it it's yeah. not 
difficult. Um, but um, but then and and then all the time. Um, if they don't want to use these um, and be really kind of pure with their fasting, they can. They can just use water mm-hmm. and salt and do it. But this is this process. The point of the fasting reset is really to teach people the benefits of the longer fasts. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we do a 24, 36, 24 and 48. And that's the longest that we do. So we do that gradually over a period of um, four weeks once we start fasting. Wow. Yep. How do your patients, how do the members find the longer fast? What, what comments do they make? No, yeah, well, actually, it's really interesting because they, they love it. And so many of our um, clients, you know, they, um, since from last year, they, mm. they've done the fasting. So whenever they, they need a feel, they need a reset, they will do that 36 hours, or mainly the 36 hours. Mm. Um, the, so the and and also it's really important to make sure that people aren't over fasting because mm-hmm. it is important to have enough meals to get their nutritional requirements in. Yeah. So um, so we're really careful about not overdoing it. And the mm-hmm. forty eight hour fast, but in particular, you know, once in three to six months, mm-hmm. really not more frequently than that. Um, Jason Fung talks about being able to do 36 hour fast three times a week for maximum oh, wow. yeah. uh, weight loss. Um, but it is hard because one of the things you find with the 36 hour fast is that you do, if you do three times a, a week, you do actually get 12, um, uh, meals that you can have within that week. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you probably realize as well that when you're on a low carb prioritizing protein kind of meal plan, yeah. you can't actually eat three times a day. It's very, very <laughs> hard. So, um, so this is the thing. So if people, if you can't get that three times, uh, three meals a day, I think in those days that you're eating, yeah. um, I think that's difficult because that's a bit too much fasting then. Yes. So I'll be I, worried about not enough nutrients and yeah, protein. Exactly. exactly. Yes. So I tend to say you can, you know, mix it up that if you do feel that, you know, it's a particularly good fast for weight loss, but maybe do a, a 36 and 224s or something like that if you really mm-hmm. wanted to do that. But um but the 24 and 36 hour fast people do a lot because if you are able to do 24 hours, then really it's so 24 hours will take you, let's say, from today's what, um, Tuesday, Tuesday night to Wednesday night. Yes, and 36 yes. hours is basically you're asleep. Um, yes. You just need to kind of get into bed early, have a <laughs> sleep and get up and, um, you know, and then you have a breakfast. So it's, if you can do the 24 hours, the 36 isn't that difficult. Okay. Um, you know, so the 48 is another little push. But if wow. you have something to, um, um, if you had something, you know, like the, the teas and the coffees and the cream and yeah. Yeah, corn broth, if you wanted to try it, um, yeah, that would get you through to the 48. Wow. What about yourself? What do you do? How, what? But what fasting regime do you have yourself? Yes. So what I do is I I intermittent. So um three on the days that I go to work, I work three days a week. I um do an eighteen hour um fast on two of those days. So I um I don't have I don't have breakfast. I just go and I go for lunch, and then on a Monday I do a twenty four hour fast. Okay. Um, and that that really just is a reset for me after the weekend. It just one, it's convenient. I don't have to think about food <laughs> when I yeah, go to yeah. work. And I feel that it's like a, a proper reset. And and then um, on the Wednesday and Thursday, I do an 18-hour fast. Um, I don't generally do the 36 and the uh, 48s, but during this fasting as a group, we will do it. Yeah. What I found uh, also, Avi, I think it is also important, I talked about this uh, with our group, is that, Um, you've also got to be mindful of the type of um, so for me fasting too much means I drop my weight too low Um, so I think you know you need to know for yourself why are you doing this and how it affects your body so I was in the you know so so 
doing consecutive long fasts is difficult for me. Mm, I think yeah. once in three months uh, to do uh, one of the 36 to 48 hours for me probably is is a much better um, option than doing it regularly. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so I you just need to know for yourself uh, how your body will react and what are your needs. So for mm-hmm. me now, it is not about weight loss. It's more about the benefits of long-term fasting. But mm-hmm. I've got careful that I balance that out um, with, um, with, you know, where I am at this moment in time. Yeah, yeah. I do see some patients that are, they're not hungry because they're low, they're fat adapted, they've done low carb for a while and do one meal a day, 24 hour fast quite often. And I see that uh, they don't have enough energy and they don't have enough nutrients, not enough protein. So I I warn against one meal a day all the time. What do you think? Yeah, I completely agree because because you simply cannot get your nutrients i mean you need we need to be getting for a woman for instance 100 grams or close to 100 grams of protein per day mm. and so there is absolutely no way i think you that you can get 100 grams of protein mm-hmm. uh, in one meal for most people absolutely I think it's very yes. very hard yeah. And um, so it's fine, I think, every so often. But I, I, I really, uh, yeah, I discourage the the one meal a day because in the long term, well, how can you get your nutrients? I mean, it is, and it is because you don't have a big appetite, you know, because you, yeah. you, you, you know, it is very, very difficult to mm. to get your nutrients in, and particularly the protein. Well, not just the protein, all the micro and macronutrients, yes. like all of those that we need. There's, it's, I think it's impossible to do it in, on one meal a day. Absolutely, I think we've got to just be mindful and be very careful with uh, eating one meal a day too often. Yes, I would usually suggest two meals a day most days, and maybe once yeah. a week, one meal a day, and maybe a little bit longer fast if they would like to maybe once a week yeah That's i mean it. that is exactly so um so it it really so the 36 so the 48 hour fast definitely and anything longer should be probably once in 3 to 6 months so the benefits of these fasts are more for in you know, the benefits of autophagy and benefits of um you know stem cell regeneration and things like that so those are more health benefits that um they they are incredibly beneficial but they are difficult to do and we need to use them with caution so maybe mm. um every 6 months you know 48 to 72 we haven't done a 72 yes. fast but yeah. um maybe every 6 months but the the 24 hour fast you could do every week one fast mm. and then you could add in a 36 hour fast particularly for, so 36 hour fast is particularly beneficial for resistant weight uh, mm. for you know for um, for people who find it difficult to lose weight or because, someone that's stored that they haven't they're not losing as much as they would like to that's it that's it yes so um so yes yeah, so you really need to understand how mm. this fasting works and how to balance so i talk about metabolic switching which is mm. uh, um, which is um you know the the switching from fasting to feasting and it's both of these are necessary that's how that's how we've evolved um yeah. so you can't do one and so this is why just feasting which most of us <laughs> is just eat all the day all day long it's six times either. a day <laughs> yeah exactly so it has to be um uh you know you fast and you feast and you know it's and when you're feasting it doesn't mean feasting on all the sugary you know mm-hmm. kind of processed food it is really feasting on good quality a uh, whole foods um which um yeah so it, i think that's important absolutely great um what about exercise what do you think people can do when they uh when they have a very active lifestyle like you and i we run and then we go hiking and we you yeah. do lots of weight training how do you incorporate fasting with your exercise regime 
Yes, so fasting is definitely, exercise is definitely something that you should be doing when you're fasting. Um, But I suppose you need to think about what type of exercise. So I probably wouldn't be doing a lot of HIIT or, you know, this very intense exercise because for that we do need... Well, because now you're, you're, you're actually fueling from fat, aren't you? So fat mm. is a slightly, it takes a little bit longer to burn and to create that energy. So the, the, sl- the more um, uh, strength training is a really good option to use. And also kind of more moderate intensity exercise is very, very good during that those fasts because... Mm. All of that, then you're fueling from your fat stores. So Mm. particularly for those people who are wanting to lose a little bit of weight, adding that little bit of exercise is is fabulous. And and strength training, weight training, um, I think, you know, if you, because the the longer fasts give you that increase in growth hormone as well, which Mm. preserves muscle, which enhances muscle. So by doing that, exercise uh, particularly strength training during that time it really enhances um you know just generally your well-being it's not just for weight loss it's just also we know that this is a process for longevity as well so it really improves um improves your um, total wellness really Mm. but you haven't been feeling extra hungry after exercising when you're fasting no I mean when you're (laughs) exercising I I don't know I find that I'm not hungry when I exercise or after exercises yeah yeah after after yeah not too well I mean Mm -hmm. usually what I do um well um I exercise during my fast and then I come home and I have I would have some I would break my fast after exercise is what I would usually do um But um, that's just so that I can get some of my protein in. But uh, but you can. I mean, if you do the more moderate intensity exercises, you can carry on um, without any. There's, there has been, it depends on the type of um, intensity. I, I yes. think I wouldn't uh, recommend the very high intensity or prolonged exercise. I think mm-hmm. I wouldn't do, you know, um, a five mile run or whatever it is. I think that would be, it might, well, I mean, if you're fat adapted, you can probably do that without any problem. Yeah. But when you're first starting out, you need to be careful and, mm-hmm. and you know, understand what your body needs. Yeah, I think if you're fat adapted, you won't be hungry anyway no, because that's right. you're yeah. burning your own fat. Yes. Great. Yes. Would you have any success stories from your group or your patients of any successful intermittent fasting stories that you can share with us? Well, success as in it is. So the way that the, the group look at it is it's a tool that they use on top of everything else. So it is something that the a lot of our clients use regularly um so i don't think it's just used in isolation Abby. it's mm-hmm. used yeah. with all of that so the all yes. the 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 yes the principles that we use of whole, eating whole food and you know all of that plus the the fasting plus the stress management and i think that yes. is really really important so it is that holistic uh, so it's not just one thing, but you know, I um, so many, and particularly we have uh, uh, we in in Whole Food is even though the niche is for women, we have quite a few men in there okay. as well. Men yep. do really well mm. fasting, yes. so I, I can't tell you one like person, but I think mm-hmm. we have a lot of people who really enjoy fasting and yep. particularly the longer fast because they feel that and it's not just there's so many benefits right so it's also the the benefits in terms of self confidence mm-hmm. and resilience and all of that that you can actually do this that we are not then limited by what society tells us to do in terms of having meals so many times mm. a day or you know there's that feeling that I am in control of this. I don't have mm. to, you know, constantly be eating. And so I think um, that's where a lot of uh, clients say that that's the benefit, that they feel that they're somehow free of mm-hmm. this this constantly having to eat 
and the worry around, you know, sometimes I remember in the past, if I was traveling somewhere and I, I was going to miss a meal, that was a big deal for me. <laughs> oh, it's like, well, that's fine. You know, I just, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's where I think um, it, it, as part of the, the, the entire, um, uh, I suppose, program or, or just um, uh, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, all the things that we guide people through this is so part as part of the tools that we 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 show people this is one and i think it is a really good tool because it can be used anywhere particularly if people are going on holiday i think yeah. it's a really really good tool that's what i use when i go away with my Sri Lankan friend <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty hard to be low carb so what I do is I then really do my intermittent fasting so I okay. would have two meals a day most days and um, have you know 18 hours in between if I can and and then walk and you know be active and that really keeps things balanced for me so I think that kind of thing helps as well it just gives flexibility to the day yeah yeah that's great that's awesome, Nalan. That's lots and lots of great tips and knowledge about intermittent fasting. And I think uh, we can empower our patients to practice more intermittent fasting and that they can do it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Avi, there was one thing I was – so um, I know that you also did the uh, Low Carb Road Show. Um, oh, so, yes. Yeah. So when I, I talked about fasting on in Brisbane, and That's one of the things I, I asked the audience, that, I mean, there were probably 200, 250 people. Yeah. So I, I said to them, okay, who fasts? And the whole, everybody put their hands up. Yeah. And I went through the number of hours. And, and you know, as I got to um, 18 for about eight till about 18 hours, people fasted. There, there was the most yeah. of the, the audience. Yeah fasting but as i moved to 24 and beyond the numbers dropped significantly yeah and yeah. there was only a handful of fasting into those 36 and 48 hours so i think a lot of people do the the uh, this uh, the 16 to 18 intermittent fasting but i don't think a lot of people do the longer fasts and I think that's a that's a pity because there are so many health benefits from yeah, the yeah 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 I am usually 16, 18, and uh, you, 24 hours is once in a week, but I haven't done longer than 24 hours. Yeah. But you should give it a go. You should give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. Now, you mentioned Jason Fung, and what other resources do you recommend people look into? I really, really recommend um, Fast Like a Girl by Dr. Mindy Peltz. Mm, yes, um, I have read that book too. Yeah, yeah it I is love it. Such a, and it's not just for women. I would say it is a really good read for men as well to understand their women folk um, because it's not just about fasting. I mean, it, it, it talks about how we need to be um, uh, so in the in women who have a menstrual cycle, how we mm-hmm. should be kind of um, tailoring the fasting uh, and feasting to our menstrual cycle. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's such a, I, I really enjoyed that book. And I think it, it offers so much um, in terms of for women to yeah. understand, uh, you know, our bodies. Um, so I think that's something that I would, uh, that I yeah. would really recommend that. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so those are the two that I would really. That's where I get a lot of my inspiration from. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have, do you have any any others that you recommend? Um, there's a couple of New Zealand. There's a what the fast. There's that's with um, a couple of New Zealanders. Okay. Yes. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, they all have pretty much the same principle of um, fasting and feasting. Yes. Yeah. No, that's great. Thank you, Nalam. Oh, you're so, welcome. Lovely. Yeah. Where do people, where can people find you? How do people join your fasting group? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the fasting is done in the Whole Food Revolution community 
so it's a, a closed group and we fast together and it's a really uh, interactive, supportive group. Um, so that's it's a whole food revolution community. It's a Facebook page. Right. Um, and um, they can check out our website, Whole Food Revolution, www.wholefoodrevolution.com.au. Um, so that just has um, the things that we're up to and mm-hmm. what we're you know what we, what our programs what programs we offer for instance right have you got any events that's that you're organizing with your whole food revolution yes yes we uh, so last year we did our first um 16 week uh comprehensive um online program that was very covered all things health and wellness so it's called holistic health revolution and we are we will be launch- that will start on the 31st of July for 16 mm. so it's weekly for 16 weeks and it has all three components Deb Ronit and I will be there live every week um and so that was a real success last year so we're, wow. we're kind of in the process of getting that information out and then we do one day workshops and we also uh, will be doing a, a virtual mindset retreat um which is um all to do with um, emotional eating and um, and um, habits and you know uh, eating behaviors, all of that. So that that will those those workshops will happen towards the as in the latter half of the year. So just yeah, it it's um, our, our Facebook. Uh, sorry, our website is uh, being uh, updated at the moment, so oh, okay. it will be will be will be ready very soon. Sure, great. And uh, next month you're coming to Melbourne to Tracy McBeard's event. We might put a plug into yes. her event. Yes. So both of you and I are speakers at Tracy's event. And what topic are you speaking about, Nalam? So I'm going to talk about the holistic, a holistic approach to cancer. Great. I'm going to talk about breathing for health. So it'll be great to catch up again, Nalam. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Avi. Yes. That's great. So she's just released um, uh, virtual tickets that people can buy for, I think it's $39 if people just want to watch the live stream at the comfort of their own home. And um, it'll be, it was in my newsletter that was sent yesterday, or people can contact me and I can put them into contact with Tracy McBee. So that's great, Nellan. Thank you so much for explaining intermittent fasting to my audience you're welcome and i hope i hope that um you know you did all of you who was listening got something out of this and would attempt the longer fasts great thank you until next time we stay tuned to prescribing lifestyle let's just stop recording Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Prescribing Lifestyle. We hope you found today's discussion insightful and motivating. Remember, your health journey is a marathon, not a sprint. Implementing small, sustainable changes over time can lead to sustainable improvements in your well-being. Remember, these podcasts are not to be treated as medical advice. You should see your own doctor for medical treatment, or you can come in to see me in my clinic, in Melbourne Low Carb Clinic face-to-face or telehealth Australia-wide. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate and review us on your favourite podcast platform. Your feedback helps us reach more listeners and continue bringing you valuable content. I also want to invite you to head to the website of Melbourne Low Carb Clinic to download a free ebook and join my free community on Facebook. Stay connected with us on the socials. And don't forget to share this podcast with your friends and family who might benefit from our discussions. Until next time, keep prioritizing your health and embrace the power of lifestyle medicine. Take care and see you soon on Prescribing Lifestyle.